My name is Aisha. We are Year 9 students from Alhidra School. We are here today to interview Mr. Richard Foster so that we can find out more about the history of New Street Station. I'm Richard Foster. I live in Sutton Coalfield. I've always been interested in railways and trains and do a lot of work on railway history. Um, quite a number of years ago, um, it was coming up to the centenary of opening of the railway from London to Birmingham. So I tried to write some articles and things on, on that. And uh, that led to a history of Birmingham New Street Station, which has already been mentioned. So it outgrew the original project, rather. We want to know if it was normal to have this many people present at this train station. Mm. Some of these engravings were deliberately done to make it look very busy. But you'll see that the key is the, to the north. And in those days, this is 1863, so this is a long time ago. People didn't travel very often. So there would only be really one train a day from Birmingham to Scotland. So this is probably an engraving of that train loading in Birmingham. And because of that, you get a lot of people. And the Victorians were notorious for taking huge amounts of luggage with them, which is why you get all this stuff about and the stuff they're putting on the roof of the train. Um, and the railway would handle that for them in those days. You didn't have to carry it yourself. Uh, so porters would load luggage onto the onto the train for you, and these and that's why I think one of you said they all look like quite well off people. Yeah. Most people who worked, you didn't get holidays with pay, so most people couldn't who were working couldn't afford holidays. You worked six days a week, so you couldn't go away very much. And I think what's happening here is these two so. Families that were stuck at home would often send their children away for the summer holidays to grandparents or aunts or uncles and things like that. And I think that's what's happening here. These two girls are being sent away for the summer holidays to stay with an aunt and uncle. And that's why they look a bit sad at the mum saying goodbye to them. And one of the interesting things that, all, that you don't seem to get nowadays well, partly because of the way trains are, but partly because of the way social society is, is that it was a very, very common practice for families to send very young, even very young children away on the train on their own to a destination. And they just asked the guard of the train to look after the child on the journey um, and relied on the guard ensuring that that child was okay. Where are these people all going? This, is, I think, is, is probably a Saturday. In, this is 1910. And in those days, most people in offices and shops and factories worked six and a half days a week. So you finished work at lunchtime on Saturday. And if you look at these people, they're all in their best clothes. So they're, they're, they're going on an outing somewhere probably because they were walking this way into central Birmingham for some special event. I don't know what. Because you notice all the hats, the, the boaters are a, a male um, thing that you put on on a, on a special occasion when you went out in your best clothes. Um, I think you've probably got the station master here, the one man in a top hat. What is the event in this picture? Before the First World War, before um, road vehicles became um, available, um, d uh, diesel and steam and petrol lorries became available, a typical railway company had twice as many horses as it did railway engines. So the London North Western Railway, which was one of the owners of um, New Street Station, had 3,000 locomotives and 6,000 horses gives you some idea of um, the size of the operation. So um, if we think then about um, how you use these horses, as a general rule, each driver of a cart that delivered stuff had his own horse, which he used each day. 
and a lot of the drivers became very attached to the horses because they were like friends and would go in on their days off to feed them titbits and see how they were and just give them that a bit of attention. And then that leads to competitiveness in um, you looking after your horse better than anybody else. So that um, became pride in the job of uh, turning out your horse for, for work looking better than anybody else's. And the railway realised that was a way of making people interested in their jobs and uh, encouraging pride in the work and uh, attention to detail and to looking after the horses. So most railways in the big towns had competitions each year for the best turned out horse, the best groomed, the best looked after and the best um, presented horse. Can you tell us what caused all this damage? So an awful lot of the bombs hit the wrong things. And I think what we've got here is that they've been trying to hit the railway station, which you can see in the background, but they've actually hit some houses and shops adjacent to the station. And, this, and the, the, that's what the firemen doing is, because the biggest problem when you get bombing is is actually fire, that usually the fire that happens after the bomb has partly demolished the building is much more destructive than the, uh, than the actual bomb. And the, that's why you've got the firemen there um, trying to hose down the uh, uh, wreckage to make sure that it didn't set on fire. But usually also the blast from the bombs is quite, um, quite destructive and you can see all the glass has gone out of the roof of the station. Um, and the station just remained like that for the rest of the war. And then in the 19, after the war, there wasn't any money. Um, and the roof had got da a bit damaged, and damaged by not having any glass in it. And they took it down in 1950 um, and just left um, the open platforms. Keep your hands on the rail and you will be safe. Keep your feet on the steps and a smile on your face. Travel safely. You're not seriously taking that on the escalator, are you? The lift is just behind you. A fall, a slip can result in a hospital trip. Please avoid accidents by not running on the station platform, stairs and walkways. Your safety is our priority. Help us to help others. If you see anyone in distress or in need of assistance, please inform a police officer or one of my colleagues. Hello. Please do not leave your belongings unattended, as they could cause a security alert and may be removed without warning. Please keep your belongings with you at all times. Please make sure you stand well clear of the platform edge whilst waiting for your train. If you require any assistance, please speak to one of my colleagues. If you require any first aid medical attention, please speak to my colleagues situated in the customer reception towards the south side entrance.